हेलो माय डियर स्टूडेंट्स इन दिस लेक्चर वी विल स्टडी द पैथोजेनेसिस ऑफ कैंसर वी विल स्टडी द वेरी बेसिक मैकेनिजम्स दैट आर रेस्पॉन्सिबल फॉर द डेवलपमेंट ऑफ दिस डिसीज सो द फैक्टर्स दैट आर रिलेटेड टू कैंसर आर जेनेटिक्स एपिजेनेटिक्स एंड मेटास्टेसिस सो लेट अस स्टडी ईच फैक्टर वन बाय वन इन डिटेल Starting with the genetic theory of cancer, genes play an important role in regulation of cell growth and differentiation. And if there is any alterations in genetic control, that can cause normal cell uh, to be converted into cancerous cell. So, for a normal cell to be transformed into the uh, cancerous cell, the genetic control must be altered. and these cancer cells they have genetic abnormalities in the cell or uh, normal genes with abnormal expression and these uh, abnormalities can be inherited or induce mutations and several factors like carcinogens viruses radiation can cause uh, alterations in the genes thus uh, causing cell mutations uh, which eventually leads to cancer as cancer is a genetic disease to understand cancer it is very important to understand the genetics of cancer as uh, cancer is caused by changes in dna that control the way cell grow and multiply we all know that cells are the building blocks of our body and each cell has a copy of our genes which act like an instruction manual and these genes they are the sections of dna that carry instructions to make several proteins now many scientists have found hundreds of dna and genetic changes or you can say mutations or alterations in the genes that help cancer to form grow and spread now in normal cell there are tumor suppressor genes and these tumor suppressor uh, genes help prevent the cancer now uh, the certain factors like exposure to carcinogens such as tobacco smoke then uh, viruses uv radiations so uh, because of this exposures what happens there are uh, there are changes in the dna and these dna changes can inactivate the tumor suppressor genes and this leads to transformation of normal cell to cancer cell and this uh, this uh, this inactivation of the tumor suppressor genes can lead to uncontrolled cell growth thus causing the alterations in the genes and causing the cells to mutate thus forming the cancer the cancer cells have affected genes and these affected genes are divided into three categories that is proto oncogenes tumor suppressor genes and dna repair genes now uh, these proto oncogenes they are involved in normal cell growth and division and however when these uh, genes are altered in certain ways or are uh, more active than normal then these uh, proto oncogenes can become the cancer causing agents uh, which is known as oncogenes so these oncogenes they are the cancer causing genes and they allow cells to grow and survive in uncontrolled manner then uh, next tumor suppressor genes so uh, these tumor suppressor genes they are involved in controlling uh, cell growth and division and if there are any alterations in the tumor suppressor genes then the cells may divide in uncontrolled manner thus uh, thus it will cause the cells to proliferate then dna repair gene the dna repair genes are involved in uh, fixing the damaged dnas and if there are any mutations with the cells in these genes uh, what will happen it will uh, tend to develop additional mutations in other genes and there will be changes in their chromosomes like there will be duplications and deletions of chromosome parts so together these mutations uh, may cause the cells to become cancerous in normal cell growth uh, the regulatory genes they control the uh, mitosis cell aging then terminate the cell death by apoptosis 
so uh, this mitosis it is the fundamental process for life and during mitosis a cell duplicate all of its contents including its chromosomes and splits to form two identical daughter cells so this process is very critical and the steps of mitosis are carefully controlled by certain genes so uh, the four regulatory genes which are involved in normal cell growth are proto oncogenes anti oncogenes or you can say the uh, tumor suppressor genes then apoptosis regulatory genes and dna repair genes so these proto oncogenes they are the growth promoting genes that is uh, they help a cell to grow uh, to grow and differentiate in a normal manner and these uh, tumor suppressor genes or you can say the anti oncogenes uh, they are the growth inhibiting or the growth suppressor genes then this apoptosis regulatory genes they control the program cell death then the dna repair genes are the uh, normal genes which regulate the repair of dna damage that has occurred during mitosis and uh, they also control the damage uh, which has happened uh, uh, they, they also control the damage to proto oncogenes and anti oncogenes now uh, if there is any genetic damage to uh, these four type of regulatory genes then that can cause the normal cell to be converted into the transformed cells or you can say the cancer cells so uh, so there will be abnormalities in the regulatory uh, regulatory genes in the cancer cells and these abnormalities are activation of growth promoting oncogenes then inactivation of anti oncogenes abnormal apoptosis regulatory genes and failure of dna repair genes so uh, this activation of growth promoting oncogenes it will cause the transformation of cell uh, or you can say the mutant form of uh, normal proto oncogen in cancer now many of these cancer associated genes uh, uh, these oncogenes were first discovered in viruses and uh, then these oncogenes uh, they are considered dominant since they appear uh, in spite of presence of normal proto oncogenes then inactivation of cancer suppressor genes so uh, this inactivation permits the cellular proliferation of the transformed cells and uh, then next is abnormal apoptosis regulatory genes so this may uh, uh, this may act as oncogenes or anti oncogenes and uh, accordingly these these genes may be active in dominant or recessive form then uh, there is failure of dna repair genes and uh, thus uh, inability to repair the dna damage resulting in mutations certain factors like exposure to carcinogens like tobacco smoke or exposure to radiation or viruses uh, can trigger the cancer and uh, these uh, triggers can cause mutation which inactivates the tumor suppressor gene or you can say the anti oncogene so this tumor suppressor genes uh, they slow down the cell division or they tell cells to uh, die at the right time so they are involved in apoptosis or you can say the program cell death so if there is mutation what will happen it will inactivate this tumor suppressor gene thus causing the cells to divide in an uh, uncontrolled manner and causing the cells to proliferate then the mutation inactivates the dna repair gene so as we discussed in the earlier slide this dna repair genes they are involved in fixing the damaged dna if there will be inactivation of this dna repair gene then there will be a uh, mutations uh, there will be additional mutations to other genes and there will be change in the chromosomes uh, and together these mutations can cause the cells to become cancerous then there will be mutation of proto oncogene Uh, so this proto oncogene uh, so when these genes are altered uh, in certain ways uh, they may become cancer causing agents or you can say on oncogene and these oncogenes they allow the cells to grow and survive uh, in a uncontrolled manner thus causing the uh, cells to proliferate to proliferate and cause cancer
the next factor related to cancer is epigenetics and epigenetics refers to the study of how cells control gene activity without changing uh, the dna sequences so uh, various endogenous and exogenous agents can damage the dna which can further cause the epigenetic alterations uh, somatic mutations and germline mutation so this epigenetic alterations is a change in chemical structure of dna uh, that doesn't change the dna coding sequence so unlike genetic changes this epigenetic changes are reversible and do not change your dna sequence but they can change how your body reads a dna sequence and example of such changes are uh, dna methylation histone modification and changes in chromosomal architecture so this epigenetic alterations uh, it occurs through dna methylation histone modification and changes in chromosomal architecture and several lifestyle factors such as diet tobacco smoke stress physical inactivity might modify the epigenetic patterns so uh, this epigenetic alterations occurs in the body when chemical groups called methyl groups are added to or removed from dna or when changes are made to proteins called histones that bind to the uh, dna in chromosomes so example of uh, uh, like for like, like smoking can result in for example smoking can result in epigenetic changes and the smokers they tend to have less dna methylation than non smoker and after quitting smoking uh, they can begin to have increased dna methylation at a particular gene so uh, this dna methylation is a biological process by which methyl groups gets added to uh, dna proteins or uh, other molecules and it is involved in regulating many cellular uh, processes then uh, the next alteration occurs through histone modification so this histone it binds to dna and it help uh, it help gives chromosomes their shape and help control gene activities so these histones basically they give structural support for uh, chromosomes then uh, the next alteration occurs through uh, chromatin remodeling so this chromatin uh, it is a mixture of dna rna and proteins that form the chromosomes in the nucleus of a cell and in chromatin uh, chromatin remodeling uh, there is rearrangement of chromatin uh, uh, formed uh, from a condensed state uh, to a transcriptionally accessible state means uh, it allows the transcription factors or you can say the uh, dna binding proteins to access the dna and control the uh, gene expression then uh, th then this dna damage can cause uh, somatic mutations so these somatic mutations are alterations in dna that occurs after conception uh, so this uh, somatic mutation it can occur in any any of cells of the body except the germ cells means uh, sperms and eggs and therefore uh, they 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 are not passed on to children uh, but this alterations can cause the uh, cancer then uh, so this uh, this mutations and alterations they can uh, they can interfere with the dna repair and uh, they can cause large increase in uh, dna damage and a large increase in somatic mutations and epigenetic mutations thus causing uh, multiply altered field defect with driver mutations now this altered uh, this field defect it, it is a biological process in which uh, large areas of cells at a tissue surface or within within an organ uh, are affected by carcinogenic carcinogenic alterations so there is a field of pre malignant tissue in which a new cancer is likely to arise and uh, so there is multiply altered field defect with driver mutations driver mutations means uh, the changes in dna sequence of genes that causes the cells to become cancer uh, cancerous and grow and spread in body and uh, this uh, this altered field defect with driver mutations uh, thus progresses uh, to cause the cancer and uh, so checking the tumor tissue uh, for driver mutations may help plan uh, better treatment to stop cancer cells from growing
the next factor related to cancer is metastasis uh, and this metastasis it is a spread of cancer from one location to other locations in the body so uh, basically metastasis it is a spread of cancer cells from the place where they first form which is known as primary tumor to another part of the body which is known as metastatic or secondary tumor so the cancer cells they break away from the original tumor known as primary tumor and these cells they travel through the blood or limb system and form a new tumor in other tissues or organs of the body known as the secondary or metastatic tumors now uh, this metastatic uh, metastasis it is a very complex process and uh, it is a major problem in the management of cancer now and since cancer patients they might develop metastasis after years uh, from diagnosis of the primary tumor and this makes the metastatic process even more complex now the steps that are involved in metastasis are local invasion intravasation into the blood or lymph uh, circulation through the body extravasation into new tissue proliferation and angiogenesis so for a cancer cell uh, to become clinically detectable tumor it must complete various uh, series of steps and it should successfully colonize a secondary site for a cancer cell to become clinically detectable tumor it must complete a sequential series of steps and it must successfully colonize a secondary site so the initial steps of metastasis require proliferation of primary tumor means the spread of cancer cells from primary tumor and invasion through adjacent tissues and basement membranes so this process of proliferation and invasion continues until the tumor invade blood vessels or lymphatic vessels and until individual tumor cells detach from primary tumor mass and carried via blood or lymph to distant target organ or you can say the secondary site so the first step which is involved in metastasis is the local invasion so local invasion means uh, the tumor cells expand into nearby environments or you can say the tumor cells they break away from primary tumor and migrate to new location or organ thus establishing a new or secondary tumor then next there is intravasation into the blood or lymph and circulation through the blo through the body so this intravasation of tumor cells or you can say movement of a tumor cell into circulation and uh, this movement it occurs through entry into blood vessels or lymphatic vessels then there is extravasation into new tissue so uh, the tumor cells then invade from the interior of a vessel into the organ parenchyma and there is proliferation and angiogenesis so the cells uh, become cancerous after mutations accumulate in the various genes that control cell proliferation and then there is angiogenesis means formation of new vessel from existing blood vessels that means there is recruitment of new blood vessels so now for a metastatic spread of cancer tissue the growth of vascular network is important and the process where new blood and lymphatic vessels are formed are called as angiogenesis and lymph angiogenesis and these vessels they form the principal route by which uh, the tumor cells exit the primary tumor site and enter the circulation so uh, the tumor growth and metastasis uh, uh, these process depend on angiogenesis and lymph angiogenesis which are triggered by chemical signals from tumor cells and this angiogenesis is stimulated when tumor tissues require nutrients and oxygen so these are the steps that are involved in metastasis so this metastatic cancer is a cancer that spreads from where it first started to distant part of the body or you can say it is a spread of cancer from primary tumor to secondary tumor and the steps uh, includes the local invasion means the spread of cancer cells from primary to secondary tumor and this occurs via intravasation and extravasation intravasation means entry of tumor cells into the circulation and extravasation means exit of tumor cells from the circulation to host to tissue 
then there is proliferation and uh, angiogenesis means there is formation of new vessel from existing blood vessels and uh, this process usually involves proliferation migration and differentiation of endothelial cells so in this way uh, the uh, cancer cells they migrate from the primary tumor to the secondary tumor